Trains pull the railroad cars, and cars hold all the things. The things from big and little farms, machine-filled factories, and even ice cream shops. So there are cars, lots of cars, to do the railroad's job. Cars, lots of cars, let's see just what they are. Behind the mighty diesel train, there is so much to see. With all those different freight cars all linked up from A to Z. First, there are the box cars, they carry everything. From furniture and shoes and clothes to toys and pipes and drains. And don't forget those livestock cars, they have a job to do. Like moving cows and pigs and sheep and all those chickens too. So there are cars, lots of cars, to do the railroad's job. Cars, lots of cars, let's see just what they are. Some products need real special cars to keep from getting spilled. So tank cars hold the chemicals or even milk that's chilled. Hopper cars are really strong to hold coal, rocks, or sand. And when you see them empty out, they sometimes leave the land. So there are cars, lots of cars, to do the railroad's job. Cars, lots of cars, let's see just what they are. Hey, don't forget the flatbeds that move from sea to sea. All loaded down with pipes and cars, or even lumber trees. Flatbeds are the oldest cars used for railroad trips. They even piggyback big trucks or boxes for some ships. And when at last we've reached the end of lines of railroad cars, a caboose means that they're on their way to some place near or far. So there are cars, lots of cars, to do the railroad's job. Cars, lots of cars, we've seen just what they are. Cars, lots of cars, we've seen just what they are. So now what do you two think about trains? They are really, really cool. Yeah, and they are fun. Yes, they are. But you must remember, real trains are not toys. They can be fun to watch and fun to ride on. But you should never play around real trains or on their tracks. Oh, Steve, we know that. Yeah, well, let me tell you a story about a couple of kids who didn't know that. Is this like one of the stories you told us before? No, this is a true story. You know, one that really happened. Okay, uh, let's sit down over there. Once upon a time... Oh, please. What's wrong? Just skip the once upon a time stuff. Stories about real trains don't start like that. All right. It was a nice day in Rudyville, as two boys pedaled their bikes towards the railroad tracks near the edge of town. They were in a hurry to get home, and were racing to see who would be the first one to reach the top of the next hill. Josh reached the top first and waited for Rob. And just as Rob caught up, they heard the sound of a train approaching. It was the afternoon passenger train headed home from the city. Let's see if we can beat the train to the crossing, shouted Josh as he raced off. Now Rob didn't think it was such a good idea, so he shouted after Josh to stop. Josh, are you crazy? It's too dangerous. But Josh wouldn't listen. So Rob decided to go along with his friend. The train started to pick up some speed as it reached a flat section of ground. Josh and Rob pedaled their bikes harder and harder. Soon, all they seemed to care about was beating the train. Rob was having fun racing until suddenly he remembered what Josh was trying to do. Josh was trying to reach the crossing in front of the train. Rob knew that this would be very dangerous and shouted to Josh to stop. But Josh just kept on going. From what Rob could see, it looked like the train would reach the crossing at the same time Josh did, and he was afraid his friend might get hurt. And Josh showed no signs of stopping. Thinking fast, Rob pedaled his bike harder and harder, caught up to Josh, and forced him to stop. And luckily for Josh, Rob was fast. By forcing Josh to slam on his brakes and lose his balance, he just missed getting hit by the train. So is Josh all right? 
Yeah, but... But what about his bike? Well, his bike did hit the ground and got bent up. Josh was mad at first, but he soon realized what might have happened. You see, Josh would not have beaten the train, and he might have ended up getting hit by it. As it turned out, because he had such a quick-thinking good friend like Rob, he only ended up with a few bruises. Yeah, and a broken bicycle. That's right, Brian, but they were really just a few dents that could be fixed. It could have been worse. Josh might have gotten really hurt. So what did you think of the story, Mandy? Well, I guess I know why you told it. Yeah, so do I. Oh, you do? Sure, so that we would remember that real trains can be dangerous. That's right. Model or toy trains can be fun to build and play with, but real trains are different. They have important jobs to do, and the engineer doesn't expect anyone to be on the tracks, and he might not even know you're around. Yeah, and even if the engineer did see someone on the tracks, he might not even be able to stop the train in time. That's right. So you two got the picture? Okay, so let's go check out the books. Okay, it must be here somewhere. What are you looking for, Mandy? Something on those other kinds of trains. You know, like our mom and dad used to go to work, and the kind our grandma uses when she comes to visit. Are they diesel or what? Well, I think some are diesel and some are electric. Okay, thanks, Rudy. Rudy says what you're looking for is right over there. Passenger trains. Yep, that's it. Let's go.